So the reason why you can access your man pages so quickly is because of a program called ManDB. And there's another program called Apropos, which will actually query that database. And that's the topic for today. And I'm also going to be showing you a one-liner that one of my viewers left that is pretty much the entire reason I decided to make this video because it is insanely useful. So if you're new to this channel, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm aiming for a thousand subs and any help would be really appreciated. So now that's out of the way, let's get started. Good morning everyone and welcome back to the channel. So I think before we go anywhere else, I should actually show you what this cool script is. So nothing special right now, but if I was to press super R, I've got, that's what I've got this actually bound to. So this brings up a terminal, but also bring up a D menu prompt that lists out all of my man pages. So let's say we want to look at the man page for something like LF. We just type that in, bam, we have that man page. Now we quit out of this, that actually closes the terminal window. And let's say we want to look at something else, like, I don't know, the man page for the program we're looking at today, like Apropos, for example. There we go. That will actually bring that up perfectly fine. So this is actually really useful for, say, examples where you're writing a script in, I don't know, NVim or Vim or just anything else, and you don't have the man page open, but you want to actually know what one of the options does for a program. And yeah, this will just let you open that up straight away without having to go through the process of opening up a terminal and then bring that open. So let's actually have a look at, we're going to not start with Apropos first, I'm going to show you the other method of using it. So I guess we'll just go through the normal method of bringing up a man page, just because. So if we go man, and then bring up the man page for man. So in here, if we go down to the dash K option, where is it? So that's just describing it. Here we go. So dash K or the equivalent is Apropos. So if we want to search something in the man database, we can actually use this with man-k. So let's say we want to search for tabbed, for example. We run that and we have two programs that have tabbed in either their name or in their short description. So you could do this for various other things. It doesn't have to be the full name of a program. So as we can see, tabbed is only a substring of your XVT. Let's try another one like let's say uh, terminal, for example. Terminal is going to be in the descriptions for most things. I don't think it's going to be in any of the actual names. So here we go. So access the name of a terminal object, access the capabilities of a terminal object, or we could do something that's just a short substring. So let's say we want to do something like LE. So in here, LE is a part of the word files and files and files. So you don't have to do the full name. You can also do a proper regex or regex, whatever you want to call it. And that's basically what you can do with the shortened down version that you can access from the man pages. But there actually is a full version of the program called just Apropos that you can access. So if we go for the, so if we go to the man pages for Apropos, let's have a look what else we can do. So there's some debugging information. That's not too important. We're not going to care about that. Some verbose stuff. We don't really care about that either. So interpret each word as a regular expression. This is the default behavior. So you don't actually have to do the dash R option. It'll do that by default. So each keyword will be matched against the page names and the descriptions independently. It can match any part of either. The match is not limited to word boundaries. So you can actually do things across words. That's actually cool. I didn't realize you could do that. So you also have the option of doing a wildcard search. So interpret each keyword as a pattern containing shell style wildcards. Now I'm not actually sure what the difference between those two is. I don't think I've run into doing wildcard searches before I do everything with regular expressions. If someone knows the difference between those syntaxes, let me know. But if you prefer doing it like this, then that's also an option. It's probably very similar and I've probably used it before, but I'm not exactly sure about the syntax myself. So if the dash dash exact option is also used, a match will only be found if an expanded keyword matches an entire description or page name. Otherwise, the keyword is also allowed to match on word boundaries in the description. So next up, we have exact. So each keyword will be exactly matched against the page names and the descriptions. So what exactly does that do? Let's actually try to run that. So apropos, we go, let's say, dash E, and then write out tab. So as we can see, we get the exact same results that we had before. But what if we write out a substring of the word tab? We write out, say, for example, tab. So in this case, we only get the program NPM completion because this is the only program that has the full word tab in it. So in these two cases here, the word tab is only a substring. So exact means ignore substrings, only go for things that are a complete string, basically. So next up we have and. So this will only display matches that actually match all of the supplied keywords. So if we were to supply this 
with multiple words. Let's say we go without the dash A option now, we go simple terminal. So this will bring up every program that has the word simple or the word terminal in it, or both of them. So we run that and we get a ton of programs. But if we were to go with the dash A option, so let's say we're actually looking for ST simple terminal, it's probably easier to actually use the dash A option in this case. So as we can see, we have these two programs here. So we have ST, the simple terminal, and we also have this random Perl module that also happens to have the words simple and terminal in it. So next up we have the dash L option. So do not trim output to the terminal width. Normally output will be truncated to the terminal width to avoid ugly results. So this will basically just print everything. As we can see here, it kind of cuts it off with a uh, ellipsis at the end. So if we just drop the dash A option here and we go dash L, so that will print everything even if it will actually go off at the end of the screen. So yeah, if we go full screen, it doesn't actually fix it because ST is a janky terminal. Anyway, so next up we have the dash S option. So if you notice that all of those man pages actually had a sort of number on the side here that you probably have no idea what that means. And I'm not really sure for myself, but the man page is actually categorized or the man page database or the man pages in general are actually categorized into different sections. Now I have literally no idea what the sections mean. There's a um, description in one of the man pages on them. I think it's under man DB maybe or under man dash pages. Someone's probably going to let me know in the comment section. They did mention in another video. I didn't bother to check it out because I don't think it's really too important for what I do. But the man pages are actually categorized into sections. So if we were to write the dash S option and we supply a section that we want to look in. So this, if we try to run this, it'll say apropos what? Because we also have to supply what we want to match on. So if we also just give it a dot, that would then just mean match on everything. So we run that and that'll print out every program that's in section three or section, as we can see in here, section three Perl, section three X, so on and so forth. But if we were to just write out three and then we give it one of the um, the subsections, like say three X, this will only print out the programs that are within three X. So as we can see, that's all of those. Still have no idea what those sections mean. I don't think it's too important to the video. So if you want to find out what those sections mean, I'm not going to go over it here, but if you want to do it in your own time, then feel free to do that. So next up, we also have the dash M option. So if this system has access to other operating systems, manual page descriptions, they can be searched using this option. So to search the new OS's manual page descriptions, use the option dash M and then new OS. I don't have any other systems man pages on here, so I can't actually use that. But if you do, then hey, that's an option there as well for you. You can also specify an alternate set of colon delimited manual page hierarchies to search. So by default, Apropos will use your default man pages. But if there's some other place that you want to look for them, then you can do that through that option. And next up, we have the dash L option, which will let you set a locale. So Apropos will normally determine your current locale by a call to the C function set locale, which interrogates various environment variables, possibly including LC messages and lang to, to temporarily override the determined value. Use this option to supply a locale string directly to Apropos. You're probably never going to use that, but if you need to specify a temporary locale for Apropos for whatever reason, then you can do that through this option right here. And we also have the option of specifying a separate user configuration that's not the default configuration for your man pages. I didn't even realize that there was a config file. I don't actually have that file defined. Maybe I'll do a separate video on that. That might be an interesting one. I'll find out how that works and I might do that video. So the part you've probably been waiting for this entire video is what is this script that I've been playing around with this entire time? So this script right here where I can just open up any sort of man page in here. So it's nothing too special actually. So. I'll just bring up my scripts folder and actually show you what it looks like. So it's this script right here called dmen, which is a very, very simple script. It's literally just one line. So we bring that up. So what we're doing is we are running man, and then within a subshell, its argument is going to be apropos dash dash long, and then we're passing an argument into it. So the example that I was given, you actually were just directly passing in dot, but I've changed it so you can actually only search a subpart if you feel like searching a subpart. Normally, I'm just basically passing in uh, this, but if I do want to search for only programs that have the word terminal in them, I want to be able to have that option. So then we are piping that into my favorite program, D menu, 
and we are then matching case insensitively. And the dash L option will basically create a vertical list and I've specified that to only be uh, 10 different rows. So as we can see in here, we have 10 options here. I'm not gonna count them out. That's a waste of my time. I think the default one that he had was like 30 or something. I think 30 is too much. I prefer it being 10. And then what we're doing is we are orking the two different options. So I'll actually just bring this up in a, I'll, bring, I'll delete that option right there. Actually, no, we'll, we'll do it like this. So I'll bring up a new terminal and I'll show you what this is actually doing. So let's run dman. And as we can see, let's just run it for st. So what it actually outputs is one and st. So as we saw within the actual apropos thing we had before, it had brackets around that. So this tr-d, all that's doing is just stripping the brackets out because I'm guessing your manual pages can't actually read that or it doesn't read it properly, for example. So if we run that again without that TR, all that was doing was stripping out those brackets. Nothing too special there. So as you'd know from just using man pages normally, you don't actually have to supply that number. If we were to write out man ST, that will bring up the ST man pages. So I don't know what the number actually does there. I think it just is a more exact match in case you in case you have programs that actually have the same name within your man pages for whatever reason. So if we were to delete that and we just run that like we were running it before, that was a different man page program. So let's say we bring up ST. That will still bring up the man pages for ST. So you don't really need that number there. I've just left it there because that's the way that it was written when it was actually posted in my comment section. And then from that, what I'm doing is within my SXHKD configs, I'm just, let's see, go down to that. I'm just binding it to super R. So if we go down to dman, all we're doing is I'm running my environment variable terminal, passing in the dash E option, and then running the dman and then dot. And that's all that's doing. There's nothing super special there. If you wanna use that yourself, it'll be up on my GitHub and it'll be in the comments section of what video? I don't remember what video, but the guy who left the comment, I wrote his name down so that I wouldn't forget it. Oh no, the video was the last video I did on man pages. So it was some tips for man pages or something like that. I'll leave it in the description down below. So the guy who left the comment was called Alexander Chaplin Braz. That is a really cool comment and I am actually using that on a daily basis now. So thank you for that. So if you like this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. If you wanna see more videos like this, Remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm aiming for a thousand subs and any help would be really appreciated. Down below, I've got my library. So if you want to see my videos on a platform that isn't YouTube, that's the best place to go for that. I've also got all of my other social links down there. So go check those out. Up on that corner, I've got the playlist this video's in. So go check that out if you want to see other videos like this. And I've also got my support links down below. So if you'd like to support the channel, go check that out. Obviously you don't have to, but there's like five or six different ways if you do feel like supporting. All my videos will remain available for free though. So if you don't feel like supporting, don't feel pressured to actually do it. And I think that's pretty much everything for me now. So I'm out. <laughs>